Hi folks, in today's video we're going to be painting a pre-production miniature that was kindly sent to me from Room 17 Games brand new Kickstarter that's running as I upload this tutorial. The Kickstarter is called Mighty Lords Miniatures and they have some absolutely wonderful miniatures on the Kickstarter. I'm going to put a link in the description box down below so you can check out all the wonderful miniatures on the Kickstarter guys. Um, but I really want to hear your thoughts on the miniatures. Uh, put a comment below, let me know what you think. As regards to the tutorial, I wanted to paint up the miniature as easily as I possibly could but with a really nice result. So, as always guys, this is going to be a very long video, so go grab yourselves a nice hot drink, or maybe, my favourite, an ice cold beer, and we'll get started with the tutorial. I start off by priming the miniature using Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer. It's very important to note that you need to be well ventilated and wearing a respirator if you're using this primer. It's very harmful if inhaled. Also, it's what's known as a hot liquid and can damage airbrushes without PTFE solvent proof seals. So make sure you've got a good quality airbrush with PTFE solvent proof seals if you are using this primer. If you can't use this primer, then the next best thing in my personal opinion is probably Steinol Resi's primers as they're a polyurethane, I believe, uh, but they're uh, way less harmful um, to spray and they do give really great results. Here I'm priming the miniature at about 20 psi and I'm just giving it a nice coat and we're getting rid of that luminous orange colour of the pre-production miniature. I want to create a really nice fetching gold armour on this miniature but we're actually going to start off spraying copper. The reason we're doing this is that we're going to leave it behind in all the recesses and all the areas where natural shadows would form. So the base coat in this case is copper from Vallejo Metal Colour range. Vallejo have many different ranges of paints. They have Vallejo Game Colour, Game Air, Model Air, Model Colour, Metal Colour which are these and I'm sure more besides. But in my personal opinion the Vallejo Metal Colour acrylic paints are the best paints you can use for airbrushing for convenience and for results. As you can see, the paint sprays out the airbrush, which is a 0.35mm Awata Eclipse airbrush that I got from airbrushes.com. And as you can see, it's effortlessly uh, been able to spray out of the airbrush. Now we're going to start laying down the gold. And again, it's a Vallejo Metal Color Gold. Here I'm going to spray at an extreme angle. Maybe it's about 45 degrees. But basically I'm spraying all the top surfaces of the miniature with the gold and I'm leaving all of the copper colour underneath the miniature and in the extreme recesses and areas where I think shadows would naturally form. Thank you. 
Now we're going to shade the miniature using Games Workshop Shade Paint Seraphine Sepia. When you actually airbrush these washes, they become more like a tint than anything else. And that's what we want to do. We want to warm up that gold a little bit. It will also gather in the recesses and create a little bit more shading. And uh, it's really going to make that gold look nice. Now we're going to catch all the extreme edges of the armour panels using Vallejo Game Air Silver. We're going to dry brush and to dry brush you literally remove all the paint from the brush that you've just dipped in the uh, Vallejo Game Air Silver on some paper towel and then you lightly brush with a flat headed brush against the miniature and it will catch all the extreme edges of the armour. Uh, this is going to make the panels pop and also make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Now we're going to create a little bit more interest on the miniature by adding uh, some blue. We're going to start off by hand painting some Imperial Blue from Vallejo Game Air. I often get answered, uh, asked questions I should say in my personal messages on Facebook saying can you actually hand paint Vallejo uh, Game Air and Model Air paints and yes of course you can. You'll just find that the paints go on uh, really thin um, but as you can see here they coat very smooth. Now we're going to airbrush some Vallejo Game Air Magic Blue towards the center panels of all the areas that we've just painted blue. It's important to note that I've dropped the PSI of my airbrush down to about 15 PSI now and I'm working really close to the miniature as I don't want to get too much overspray on the gold. Don't worry if you're new to airbrushing and you get a tiny bit of overspray on the gold as you can just come back in with a Vallejo Metal Color with your uh, regular brush and um, just touch up any of the oversprayed areas but try and be as neat as you can as it will save time uh, not having to touch up the miniature on oversprayed areas
same thing as what we just did with the magic blue color now we're going to go and get even more closer to the center of the panels that are being painted blue with Leo Game Air Electric Blue. I wanted to add some really nice decals to the miniature. Now the best way to lay down miniatures, uh, sorry decals not miniatures, is to use a gloss varnish as your base to place down the decals. The reason we use gloss varnish is it creates a really ultra slick and smooth surface for the decals to go on super flat. So I airbrush some of the Vallejo gloss varnish and I let it dry for 10 to 15 minutes and then we can start applying our decals. After applying the really cool decals that I got from Green Stuff World, I believe they're called World War II decals, um, but the Fleur de Lis uh, uh, design on these decals are really nice and what we want to do now is get rid of that horrid looking gloss uh, reflection on the miniature and we're using Vallejo Game Air Premium Satin Varnish which I really love and um, as you can see it's really making those decals look painted on now and uh, really nice. Now we're going to paint the tunic area of the miniature using Games Workshop's Air Paint Corn Red. You can use the regular base paint corn red for this, it's just that I had this air variety to hand so I just used this. Um, but basically we're just going for a nice smooth even coverage of the corn red. Now we're going to airbrush some highlights using Vallejo Game Air Bloody Red. I'm painting the miniature here at about 15 psi working super close and I'm only concentrating on the top surfaces of the folds and we're trying to leave the corn red behind in all of the recesses of the folds. Now we're going to paint the sword, we're using Exhaust Manfold Old by Vallejo Metal Colours. Now we're going to airbrush a highlight onto the miniature using Vallejo Game Air Silver. I'm going to be 
uh, aiming for the very center of the uh, sword and also the very tip of the sword so we're going to leave the manifold um, color be hot behind uh, towards the bottom of the blade and just up beyond the center I don't very rarely use Valaya, uh, sorry, uh, Reaper Master Series paints because I don't like the bottles. They block uh, really easily and they're very hard to unblock. But the paints themselves are absolutely fantastic. Uh, here I'm using Fair Skin from Reaper Master Series, and we're just aiming for a really nice, smooth, even coat of the uh, Master Series Fair Skin. It's important to know I've thinned this down about one to one with water and I give it about two to three thin coats as to not obscure any of the details of the face. Now we're going to wash the face with the Army Painter Soft Tone. I've got to be honest guys, it's much better if you actually use the Army Painter's Flesh Wash, but I've run out and uh, I didn't realise, uh, so I need to order some more of that stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm using just Soft Tone here to wash the face, getting all of the recesses, like the eye sockets, the mouth, uh, around the edges of the nose, uh, just to uh, really make the face look three-dimensional. Now we're going to paint the base using Vallejo Game Air Earth. After allowing the base to dry, I'm coming in with Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade and we're just washing the base. After the wash thoroughly dries, I then come in and dry brush some Games Workshop or Shabti Bone, which I forgot to film on camera. And here we have our finished miniature. I think it looks absolutely wonderful and for a pre-production miniature it really had exquisite details. I can't wait to see what the real uh, true versions of these miniatures look like when they get printed, especially the 75mm scale miniatures as I think that scale is just epic. But anyway guys, I uh, really want to hear your thoughts on this miniature and this tutorial. Let me know if you liked it or if you would have done anything different yourselves personally. And uh, I want to thank Team, not Team, Room 17 Games 
uh, once again for sending me the miniature out. Uh, it's really nice of them to send me out such a, an early release of the miniature. And uh, really go over and have a look at that Kickstarter, guys. Some of those miniatures look so nice. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box below for that. And uh, lastly, guys, I just want to uh, say thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And I'll catch you in the next one.